If you're a coach who wants more clients, this video might be one of the most important ones you watch all year. You're about to discover eight messaging mistakes coaches don't know they're making that cost them thousands in lost income every single month. So if you're ready to discover exactly how to get the coaching clients you want, keep watching because you're about to find out. Hey, my name's Jason Moss. I'm a multi six-figure business coach and I've helped thousands of coaches launch and grow their businesses. And look, the messaging mistakes I'm about to share with you in this video super powerful stuff when it comes to getting more clients. If you're looking for a roadmap you can follow, you can apply to your business to get you on track to signing two, three, four or more high paying coaching clients month after month, I put together a free client attraction guide that walks through all the details on how to make that happen. You're definitely gonna wanna check this out and you can get it for free by clicking the link above or in the description down below. Mistake number one is overemphasizing the struggle. So I often talk about the value in your marketing of helping somebody connect to pain. When someone feels connected to the fact that there's something in their life that they're not happy with, some problem or challenge that they're experiencing, they're gonna be more motivated to wanna make a change and ultimately to wanna hire you as a coach to help them do that. But there is a fine line between doing this effectively in your marketing and over-indexing on pain and the struggle and the challenges. And oftentimes, if you focus too too much on the challenges and pain points that your ideal clients are experiencing in your messaging, you will start to attract someone who is very disempowered, someone who is wallowing in their pain, someone who's so focused on the pain, so caught in what's not working, that they're often not very empowered to change it. I see a lot of coaches overemphasizing pain in their marketing, using words like, are you struggling to X, Y, Z? Words and phrases that really call out that person that is so caught in that place of pain that oftentimes they're not gonna make really great clients because those are the people who are most disempowered. They're not really in a place where they're resourced to be able to change things. So there is a fine line in terms of your marketing, how you focus on pain and how you highlight the pain. I think it's okay to talk about pain. It's a very important part of the marketing process, but we also wanna speak to someone's power when we do it. So you can say something like, hey, you know you could figure this out if you had the right tools, but you've just been feeling stuck for a while. And you know that there's this vision on the other side and something that you really want. And if if you can just figure out this one challenge and get over this one roadblock, things could be so much better. That's an example of talking about pain in a way that isn't like, are you struggling with X, Y, Z, and you've been stuck and disempowered and there's a balance there, right? So we need to be careful in terms of how we talk about pain in your messaging, especially if you're noticing that the people that you're attracting are just like people who are like super disempowered, really looking at how can I shift that in my messaging so I can start to balance the way I talk about pain and call in someone who is connected to the fact that they have a problem, but isn't so you know down the rabbit hole in terms of that problem that they're not gonna be open and receptive to wanting to change it and being in a place where they really can change it. And messaging mistake number two is pitching the process. So when it comes to pitching what you do, there's really two things you can focus on. The process, in other words, all the steps that you take somebody through when someone works with you. The specific modality that you really focus on through your coaching. What's so great about NLP and you know all the different certifications that you've been through and all the tools that they're gonna to get when they work with you and all the worksheets they're gonna fill out. All of that is the process. Call that the steps that someone goes through when they work with you. That's one thing you can focus on. The other thing is the results or the outcomes. Someone goes through this process with you, what's on the other side? How is their life gonna be different? Where are they gonna be? Or what are they gonna have? Or what are they gonna be able to achieve that they aren't able to achieve today as a result of going through all this work with you? The truth is that focusing on the results and the outcomes over the process, much more powerful messaging because most people people out there, the people who are thinking about working with you, don't really care that much about the process. What they wanna know is it's not gonna be too much work, it's not gonna be too painful, and they're gonna be able to uh, actually do it. That's important for most people to know and to be aware of. And at the same time, what they really care about is what's on the other side. Nobody wakes up in the morning and says, you know what I want more than anything else in the world is to go through all these coaching sessions and to spend hours a day talking to some coach and to fill out worksheets and to learn more about NLP. Most people don't don't care about that stuff. And it's easy to forget that because as coaches, we're often very passionate about our specific modalities or how we help people, right? So you have to remember that your ideal clients care much more about the results and the outcome over the process. So asking yourself right now, in the work that I do, what is that outcome or result? And the third big messaging mistake is a week first line. So we do content review calls inside Coaching Launchpad, my flagship uh, program for coaches who are looking uh, to grow their business, to get on track to 10K months. And every couple 
couple weeks, we'll review uh, your content inside the program. And, and we do these calls where I, I'm basically taking a look at social media content from coaches inside the program, giving them feedback, showing them here's exactly what to tweak and change so you can get more clients through your messaging. And one of the biggest things I see is coaches who will spend so much time putting together this incredible piece of content. It's like an amazing post, but the first line of the post is like a complete throwaway. And so they have this amazing piece of content, but the hook at the beginning of the post is so bad that 99% of the people who actually see that post on social media are just gonna scroll past it. People often forget that like the first line of your social media content is really selling the post itself. And if you don't grab someone in that first line, if that first line does not scroll Stop the scroll. In other words, someone's scrolling through Instagram or TikTok or Facebook. You've got to get them to stop that scroll. So that first line's got to be really impactful and juicy, a pattern interrupt, some way of, of grabbing someone's attention. And if you can't do that in that first line, or if a piece of content doesn't do that, you could have the best post in the world, but nobody's actually going to read it. So I often recommend that coaches spend much more time focused on the first line of their content. Oftentimes they don't think about this. It's like a throwaway. You can put like the meat of the story or the, the, the key like line in the story up at the top. As an example, you know, you look at some movies. If you ever see like the Fast and Furious, you, you go to the movies and, and you know, one of those, those big blockbuster movies, oftentimes like the movie starts right at the heat of the action. So it's like the first scene is like they bring you into like the intense car chase and like someone's, you know, driving in the car and there's like people chasing them. They don't start the movie with like the sun coming up in the morning and someone's getting out of bed. And no, they bring you right into the heat of the action. So you can do the same thing in terms of your social media content. And when you're telling a story, oftentimes I find like seven, eight, nine lines in, there's like one line that's like, ooh, that like hits really hard. Let's put that one line up at the top of the post and use that to start the piece of content. You can work on this over time and we spend a lot of time uh, with the coaches inside our program helping them develop their skills in terms of content creation because this stuff is really important. Making sure that first line really counts, that that line stops the scroll and it's gonna make somebody really wanna read the post. Super important key when it comes to messaging success. And the fourth big messaging mistake, this is something I've learned the hard way <laughs> in my own business, is hand-holding. Oftentimes I hear coaches who are like, how do I attract more empowered clients? people who are gonna do the work, who are ambitious, who are gonna show up, who are self-led. And one of the big keys is ferreting out all of the language and the words that you use that imply some form of hand-holding through the work that you do. Words like step-by-step, step, as an example. If you say, you know, our program is gonna walk you step-by-step step through this entire process. We're gonna make it simple and easy and you just have to like copy and paste, you know, this into your business or stuff like that, generally tend and to attract more types of clients who are looking for someone who can hold their hand through the whole journey and give them you know, lots and lots and lots of ground floor support. They're not as empowered as the people who you know, are just like, you know what, I don't need like a template here. Like you give me like the roadmap and I'll be able to take it and run with it, right? So you have to be careful of using language like this. And oftentimes, even though mass audiences tend to respond really well to this, it can very quickly lead to attracting a type of client who is a little bit more disempowered, who is more in that place where they're gonna need a lot more help moving through your coaching program. They're not gonna be in the place to really be ambitious and take action and to be self-led. So be careful with this stuff and asking yourself, is my messaging implying some form of hand-holding? And if so, how can I ferret out like all those words and phrases that I might not even be aware that I'm, I'm using to start to call in more of that like self-led type of client? And messaging mistake number five is using we versus you and I. I am guilty of this. I do this still all the time. I've probably done this in this video, but it's, it's really important to remember that when it comes to your messaging, you're always having a direct one-on-one -on -one conversation with the person who's reading it. If you think about how social media works, you know, someone reads your post, it's one person on the other side of that screen reading your content. And so when you write content or, you know, write a website or write an email, I want you to think of it like I am having a direct conversation with the person on the other side of the screen. That's how I'm thinking about recording this video right now. That's why it hopefully comes across conversational because in my mind, it's you and I having a conversation. That's the frame and the lens on which you know I record videos and create content. So in terms of your messaging, when you're using words like we or us or speaking more in like general, broad, kind of more like preachy tones, it's like oftentimes we think we need this, but really, you know, 
Uh, all of us need more of that versus you ever feel like you need more of this? Well, here's the truth. I've learned in my own life that I actually need more of that. Lands very differently. So looking at your content and asking yourself, am I using we, am I using us? And how can I switch that messaging so that I'm, I'm speaking more from a place of I and you? And messaging mistake number six, super common one, not knowing who you're speaking to. The most important key to success when it comes to standing out on social media, when it comes to creating messaging that really lands and resonates and connects with someone is to know who that someone actually is. Great messaging holds up a mirror and talk about this effect where it's like when you can reflect back to someone, their life, their challenges, their desires, their dreams, uh, their beliefs in a way that really like when someone else sees that they go, wow, like you're reading my diary. Like this is like, you're speaking to me in a way that's better, better than I could possibly even describe myself. This is how you really stand out and create that sense of resonance and connection with somebody else. And it starts by really understanding who that person is and also having one very specific type of person that you're communicating with through your message. If you don't have a niche, if you're just trying to communicate to everyone, or if maybe you have a sense of like who your people are, but it's pretty broad and maybe it's like you haven't really taken the time to define that, or it feels like you're straddling like a couple different groups of people, it's much harder to do this. And so your messaging often comes off much more like vague and general, and it fails to make that connection with the person who's reading it. So who are your people? Who is your message really intended to connect with? Ask yourself that question, do some journaling on that. Super important question is probably the most important question that you could possibly ask yourself when it comes to creating messaging that really connects and stands out. And that brings us to messaging mistake number seven, which is coaching cliches. Now this is often a symptom of not knowing who your messaging is intended for. So we just talked about that, right? But when you're, you're not clear on that, or even if you are clear on that, sometimes the way that that manifests in terms of your messaging is overusing lots of cliches that don't really mean anything. Transform your life or get to the next level. Those are two things I see all the time on coaches' websites or in copy. What the heck does that mean? What does it mean to transform your life? That could be anything. What does it mean to get to the next level? So these phrases are so general and vague that they fail to make any sort of meaningful connection with the person on the other side of the screen. And whenever you're tempted to use these phrases or these cliches, just ask yourself, what do I mean? When I say get to the next level, what do I mean? And so for me, get to the next level might be helping a coach uh, go full time and, and quit their nine to five and scale up to 10K months. So instead of saying get to the next level, I could say grow your coaching business to consistent 10 K months and quit your nine to five and go full time as a coach. That's so much more specific. And the more specific you can be in terms of your messaging, the more impactful and resonant your messaging is going to be. So asking yourself that question first, and then going back to those cliches and really uh, challenging yourself whenever you're tempted to use one to get more specific, to be much more tangible in terms of what is that specific thing that you're really talking about. And that brings us to mistake number eight, which is weak or missing invitations. I was on a coaching launchpad Q&A call with our client community. And we have a coach there. He's a great coach, really good at what he does. Awesome at creating content. He, he shows up on video and it's like, I, I love the way he comes across on video. But he was sharing in our call, he was like, I feel like I wanna be booking more calls. And we were talking this through and what uh, became clear through our conversation was even though he was creating all this great, valuable educational content, he wasn't talking about his coaching programs and he wasn't inviting people who might've wanted to work with him to take that next step, to book a call, to submit an application, to send a DM to reach out. And so, you know, it was no surprise to me like why he wasn't getting more people reaching out to him. I'm like, dude, you're creating all this great content, but like people don't even know you have a coaching program and they don't know what to do if they wanna work with you. So oftentimes I see coaches who are creating all this great free valuable content. They're like, why am I not getting more calls? And this is the reason why. It's because they're not making enough invitations. They're maybe not making invitations at all. People don't even know that they have programs. You know, they don't know what to do in order to work with them or their invitations are weak and ineffective. I see a lot of invitations where it's like someone will put together like an amazing post. And then at the bottom, it's like, you know, DM me to chat. I'm like, Pfft. Well, nobody wants to chat with you. Nobody I know wakes up in the morning and says, you know, I have so much time available in my day. You know what I want to do is just chat with like 
a random stranger on the internet. Nobody wants that, right? What people want is that result or outcome that your coaching promises. So really great invitations tie in that result and outcome. We have so many trainings and resources inside our, our Coach and Launchpad program to help you create more impactful, powerful invitations. We spend a lot of time focusing with clients on how to do this well, because it's a really big key to success. Asking yourself, if you're not hearing from as many leads as you want, if you're not having people reaching out to you on a regular basis, are you making people aware that you have coaching programs, that there are things that you offer to be able to help them? And, uh, and how are you doing then? And how can you show up and do that more consistently and more effectively in your messaging? Okay, so hopefully illuminating these eight mistakes should give you some clarity on a couple of key tangible things you can shift in terms of your messaging to start attracting more of the clients you really want. And I also wanna reorient you back to the fact that messaging is one big key to success when it comes to getting more clients. There's a number of other things you gotta have in place too if you wanna start attracting high paying coaching clients consistently. If you wanna know what those other things are and what to have in place in order to attract two, three, four, or more high paying coaching clients month after month into your business, I put together a free client attraction guide that walks through so much of my best advice on how to get clients consistently. It's completely free and I'd love to share with you. All you gotta do to get it is click the link above or in the description down below to go download that right now. And if you enjoyed this video, you're definitely gonna love that one too. So click the link on the screen to go check that out and I'll see you in the next video.